All right, this is our third set of notes from chapter eight. In this set of notes, we'll focus on the lever rule, and then we'll also take a look at a couple of examples dealing with uh, TXY phase diagrams. All right, and so the idea behind the lever rule is in the last set of notes, we just looked at TXY phase diagrams. Okay, and so, you know, how might I use a TXY phase diagram or what might be a process involving a TXY phase diagram? Well, if I'm dealing with you know, a distillation column, so if I just think of the limiting case of a you know, flash drum, I have a mixture uh, that's a liquid at a given composition and temperature and pressure. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep pressure constant, but I'm gonna heat that mixture until it enters a two-phase region. Why I'm gonna do that is because from the last set of notes, I know if once I enter the two-phase region, and I'm gonna end up getting a vapor phase, which is rich with respect to the most volatile component, or has a vapor phase mole fraction greater than that mixture I started with. And the liquid will actually have a composition of the least volatile component greater than that um, initial system I started with. And so what the lever rule you know, is, is getting after is, okay, if I'm trying to design such process, uh, when I take my system and I heat it up in my two-phase region, what's the relative amount of vapor coming out relative to liquid or liquid relative to vapor? All right, so we want to know how much you know, vapor is coming out relative to liquid or vice versa. All right, and how we cook up such relationship is via a simple mass and uh, mass balance. Okay, so I'm going to take this black box. Okay, and so you can picture this as being, say, a flash drum, where I have initial feed of mole fraction Z1. So this is the composition of my liquid mixture. I'm going to send it into my flash drum or this magical black box, so that coming out of my system is going to be a vapor in equilibrium with the liquid. So here's my feed that's a liquid going into my drum. And coming out the top, I have a vapor in equilibrium with the liquid. So I have a binary mixture. So I'm going to designate the inlet composition as mole fraction Z1, vapor phase Y1, and liquid X1. Okay. And then we're going to do a simple uh, total and component mass balance on our system. Okay. So my total mass balance would just be F is equal to L plus V. And in terms of component mass balance, well, Z1F is equal to X1L plus Y1V. Okay. All right, so let's take F is L plus V. Let's plug that in for F, and then we're going to rearrange and collect terms in L and V. Okay, so I plug it in. Okay, distribute, and then rearrange the collect terms in L and V, and then solve. I get the L over V is equal to Y minus Z divided by Z minus X. Okay, so L would correspond to the flow rate of my liquid stream. V would correspond to the flow rate of my vapor stream. So this tells me how much material is actually coming out as liquid relative to vapor, right? And so if I think about, say, the extreme case of my bubble point, it's great if that gives me the maximum possible Y uh, for that you know, initial system, but how much product am I actually getting, right? And so um, you know, where it gets the name lever rule, so this is L over V, okay? And what we get is this is Y minus Z on top. Okay, what's the significance of Y minus Z? Well, Z is the composition of the mixture I started with. Y is the composition of the vapor coming off the top of my uh, drum. So I know Y is greater than Z. And if I think about my T versus TXY phase diagram, this is essentially giving me the distance from my uh, dew line to uh, the composition of my mixture. On the bottom, I have Z minus X. I know Z is going to be greater than X. And physically, what this corresponds to on your TXY phase diagram is this is the distance from my uh, bubble line to the composition of my mixture, right? So it gets the name lever rule, it's like balancing a teeter-totter, right? The relative amount coming out liquid to vapor is equal to the ratio of the distance of your dew line to your feed and the distance between your um, bubble line and, and your feed, okay? So, um, you know, graphically, so this is L over V. Um, so, you know, here's, you know, Y, uh, here's you know, Z, the feed I started with. So Y minus Z is going to correspond to this distance. Uh, Z minus X is going to correspond to this distance, or distance from our um, bubble line. Okay, so L over V is equal to the ratio of these two distances. Cool, okay. Uh, so if you want to play around with more uh, algebra, you, know, you could calculate what's called the fraction remaining liquid. So that just tells me how much is coming out liquid relative to what I started with, right? My total initial feed rate. Uh, fraction vaporize is just V over F, okay? All right, and you know, before we look at example 8.1, so 
again, you know, the, the significance of this is, you know, it's one thing to say, hey, I have this mixture, uh, you know, based on, you know, calculating the bubble point for that mixture, I can calculate the maximum possible Y coming out my column, right? So it's great. I can say this is the maximum possible Y I can achieve, right? But what you'll find is if I go to, you know, lever rule or fraction vaporized, remember at my bubble point, right, um, your feed composition is just equal to X. And so what I would find if I plugged into fraction vaporized V over F is Z minus X is equal to zero. So my fraction vaporized is equal to zero. What that tells me then is nothing's actually coming out of my drum as a vapor. So while that's my maximum possible Y, if I set my maximum possible Y, nothing's coming out the top. If I think of the far extreme, if I were to heat my system all the way up to the uh, dew point, well, at the dew point, uh, what I have is that Y is equal to Z. And so when uh, Y is equal to Z, okay, if I go to this fraction remaining liquid category or equation, uh, they tell me the fraction remaining liquid is zero, right? And what that means is if nothing's coming out liquid, then everything's coming out as vapor. So at my bubble point, no vapor's coming out. At my dew point, only vapor's coming out. And so what happens is, as we saw on the graph, is I increase the temperature, Y1's gonna decrease, right? The composition of my most volatile component in the vapor phase is gonna decrease, but at the same time, we see that as temperature increases, um, the amount coming out in the vapor phase is um, increasing as well. So it's kind of a, a double-edged sword. So if I want high concentration of Y in the vapor phase, that's gonna to correspond to a low flow rate of vapor coming out. Okay. If I want a high flow rate, say a vapor, uh, coming out the top, uh, then that corresponds to a low concentration of vapor coming out the top, right? So there's this trade-off of amount coming out relative to composition. Okay. So let's look at an example. So example eight, one in the book. Uh, so 50% by mole solution of heptane and decane is heated to 135 degrees C at 1 ATM. Determine the state of the system, vapor, liquid, or two-phase. If this is a two-phase system, calculate the amount and composition of the two phases. Okay, well, so the first thing I would do is when, I told, when I'm told I have a 50% mixture, I would go to my graph and I would draw a vertical line through 50%. Okay. Why? Because if I have a closed system, I know the total composition of my system is going to be 0.5. Okay? So my system then must lie somewhere on that vertical line. Okay? And even from there then, you can get a whole range of information. All right? Once I have you know, that vertical line drawn, I could find the bubble line, I could do, find the dew line, and I know the range over which my system would be vapor, two-phase, and liquid. Okay? So then we're told that our system's at 135 degrees C and 1 ATM. So the significance of 1 ATM is that's just the pressure that, you know, should ideally be written on the phase diagram. Remember, pressure is constant. And if I'm at 135 degrees C, well, then I could draw a vertical or a horizontal line, uh, which is presumably here from the example. Okay. So, um, you know, I'm just going to draw it in. So I draw on that horizontal line, and what you find is those two lines cross within the two-phase region. So that means I have a two-phase mixture. Okay. Now, in terms of calculating the composition of those two phases. Well, um, when my lines cross inside my phase envelope, I have a two-phase mixture. If I think back to Gibbs phase rule, binary system at two-phase coexistence, I only have two degrees of freedom, right? So since pressure is already fixed, I have just one degree of freedom. And so uh, you know, if I have binary vapor-liquid coexistence or vapor-liquid equilibrium altogether, I know my two phases are equal to each other. So I draw on my uh, isotherm. Uh, so then now the temperature is fixed, everything else is fixed. I read off my liquid composition is where my uh, isotherm hits my bubble line, and my vapor composition for my um, isotherm hits my dew line, where again, Y is greater than Z, Z is greater than X, okay? And that's gonna be true for these ideal systems. Again, later on, we'll look at exceptions to the rule. Now, if you want to calculate you know, the fraction coming out liquid, fraction coming out vapor, um, or whatnot, you could just use a mass balance. Um, so L over F is just 0 0.6. Uh, so that means, you know, if I had a feed of 10 uh, kilomoles per hour, the 6 kilomoles per hour is coming out at liquid, and then 4 must be coming out as vapor. Okay, cool. All right, example 8.2. What's the maximum concentration of heptane in the vapor that we can obtain by heating the solution of the previous example at 1 ATM? Okay, well, heptane is my most volatile component. That's what I'm trying to concentrate in my vapor phase. 
So if I have a mixture that's 50% heptane, what's the largest possible Y I can get coming out the top of my column? Well, we said Y max is going to be found at my dew point. Okay, so if I take that mixture and I heat it up to the two-phase region, right, I could draw all possible isotherms between my bubble point and dew point. And what you'll find is the farthest I can get to the right on my dew line is at the bubble point. Right? So it would be your bubble point, and you could read off Y. It would correspond to 0 0.9. Okay? Again, it's a theoretical uh, limit. If you were to plug into your equation for uh, fraction uh, vaporized, you'd find out that you, know, you weren't actually getting any vapor out. Okay? So from a practical standpoint, this puts a limit uh, on the obtainable separation. Um, but again, you know, it's a theoretical limit. You're not actually getting any vapor out. Significance of this would be, you know, I have a mixture of this composition. I want to try and get a vapor phase that is rich with respect to the most volatile component. You know, using a flash drum, can I get, uh, you know, a composition of, you know, Y, <laughs> um, right? And so what it'd be is, you know, I know Y max is going to be, um, you know, the value at the bubble point. You know, the minimum Y would just be equal to Z, the value at the dew point. And so I know that you know I can get any possible y in between those two extremes. Okay. All right, eight three, a fifty percent by mole vapor mixture of heptane and decane is condensed by cooling under constant pressure of one atm. What's the composition of the first drop that forms? Okay. Well, so now I have a vapor phase. So again, I would still draw this you know vertical line of um, you know mole fraction zero point five. Now in this case, I'm starting with the vapor. I'm going to cool the vapor, so it's being condensed, so uh, you know, decreasing the temperature. And the first drop of liquid appears where I hit my dew line. Okay. And so uh, what's the composition of the first drop that appears? Well, that's just corresponding to the composition at your dew point. So I'd go to my dew point, draw an isotherm, and then I could read off that X from the bubble line. Right. Okay, And that's... Uh, Set of notes three.